Well, welcome to Last Tackle Extra. Uh, we're going to be having a little bit of discussion throughout the season about the key things, the exciting players, the big moments on top of our weekly show, The Last Tackle here on the Sports and Rugby League. And four rounds into the Betfred Super League, let's take stock about the fast starters. The league table tells a story. It doesn't tol tell the whole truth, though. There's been players all over the league from top to bottom who have made an incredible start. And I'm joined by Kevin Brown. Kevin, some of the individual performances we've seen so far this season seem to be taking this league to another level. Yeah, and there's a lot of form that's um, different from last year. Jay Field at Wigan, I think he's uh, been a revelation. And the main part why Wigan have won all the games so far, they, they were in a little bit of trouble uh, last week against Toulouse, but that man again popped up for a try. And every time he touches the ball, I get excited now. I'm, I'm on the front of my chair expecting him to do something. So that wasn't the case last year. So I think Matty Pete deserves a lot of credit with that man. Hey, if you just use the standings for the Steve Prescott Man of Steel Award with four rounds in, so we can't read into these too much, but Sione Matauta heads that up for St Helens. He's had an outstanding start to the season. He was consistently good last year, but he seems to have gone up another gear. He's a monster. He's a monster in defence. I think he, he's on the back of you know, an already formidable pack that they've got there as Saints. And he's come in last year and, and been great. And his performance levels have kicked on again this year. But his attack, I think, has grown an extra arm. I think you know, we saw him running good lines and scoring plenty of tries last year. But he's got a pass. Johnny Lomax on that edge and Wellsby. Um, he started throwing that pass in and he was putting a few try assists in, which we didn't see. So... A great big man, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of little men, are, uh, you know, the eye catchers at the minute, but himself and Mike McMeekin especially are uh, two big men that are doing, doing really well. Ed, a quote that's picked up quite a bit of traction on social media over the last couple of days from the weekend. Ian Watson, and I do wonder if Watto was just winding a few people up a little bit here, but Tui Lola Hayer has called him the best fullback in the league after their performance against Salford. You know Watto, you know Tui. Uh, he is an outstanding player and he seems to be fitting in very well at Huddersfield. He is. Whether he's the best fullback, I'm not sure. There's Jake Connor's performance last week, especially, was probably the best single performance. I think Jake's probably his, his consistency is where he needs to get better. But Tui Lola here, I, I agree with Ian there. He's, um, his game at the weekend against Salford, his old club, he was instrumental, the man of the match. I think he scored a few tries, or he scored one try, set a few up. And the kicking game that he's got, he's got this free range where he's roaming around and, and he's creating havoc where he doesn't seem to have the pressure of organising. So he's, um, he seems to be flourishing under, under water at Huddersfield again. Last couple of rounds as well. Just with the weather being a little bit better, it does feel like the, the, the rugby's opening up a bit. It's been a bit more expansive. Who are the players that you've picked out that have really got you edge of your seat whenever they get the ball? Yeah, the players we mentioned, Lola here and Field especially, I think Jake Connor. But I think that young man, Lewis Dodd at St Helens, um, he, he came in and, and if I'm totally honest, I was expecting to Saints, for Saints to drop a little bit this year, but they've done the opposite. They seem untouchable. Whoever they play against, they blow away. They've played some big sides. They played Catalan, they played Uddersfield, two, two teams who have only lost to Saints. And that man, Lewis Dodd, he seems to create a lot of things. He's took over the, the kicking game from Lachlan Coote, who obviously left to Will KR, but he's not just putting the kicks in, he's chasing his kicks, the variation in his kicks. So he's, he's fantastic, and he's added to Lomax and Wellsby, and, and already that, that great pack of St. Helens, they just look unbeatable at the minute. Is it too soon to start talking about Lewis Dodd as a potential England candidate at the World Cup? I don't think it is. I think he, he sort of served his apprenticeship last year, and now he's showing consistently that he's good enough. He's not just one of a, good, uh, a number of good Super League players. He's one of the best players in the competition for me in the first month. So I don't think it's too soon. I think if you're ready um, and, and it's the time, you just put it, you just go for it. And I think if we're going to beat the Australians, we need people who they've not heard of and not seen before. And Lewis Dog could probably catch them you know, a little bit by surprise in the World Cup. We've talked a lot about backs, a lot about half-backs. Just going to move it into the forwards. Alex Wormsley, staying with St Helens, but my word, he is probably the best prop in Super League. He's world class. He's world class and he has been, you know, you mentioned Lewis Dodd there, is it too, too soon to sort of say? Well, with Alex Wormsley, he's been doing this now for five or six years. Unfortunately, he was playing when I was playing too, so I know how hard it is to tackle Alex Wormsley. He's a, he's a bag of elbows and knees and... And wherever you try and hit him, he, he catches you with something and runs over the top of you. So he's a fantastic player and he seems to be doing longer minutes. I always thought the one weakness that Big Al had was his, his fitness, but he's worked on that. So he's, um, 
No, he's going great at the minute, along with another couple of his teammates at St. Helens. I've seen John Wilkin in the last week or so refer to Morgan Knowles as the best player in the competition. Before we finish this little segment, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you the same question. Who do you think the best player in the Super League is at the moment? Um, I think Tui Lola here. I think the fact that he's got him playing out of position for me, uh, probably in his best position now, everyone expected him to go there and him and Theo Farge be you know, the pivots around Huddersfield, but he's just playing like he's in the backyard, back home in Tonga, and the way he's playing, and he's transformed Huddersfield from, from a mid-table team to a real contender side now, and I think he, at the minute, you know, we mentioned Jake Connor before, um, his consistency is what he's missing, but I think Tui Lollahi over the first month, for me, is the best player in the competition. Well, there you have it. It's not just Ian Watson then singing Tui Lollahi's praises early doors. It's too early to be talking about who's going to be lifting that Man of Steel trophy at the end of the season. But it isn't, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do and that we won't. Some fantastic individual performances. And, of course, you can get more insight, especially from this man, on the last tackle right here on the Sportsman Rugby League.